Hello, good morning. All right, class, this is going to be a continuation of our election cycle when we're talking about the election, the upcoming election, November 3rd. Um, so yesterday, or this past article that we read together was um, describing what the election is. Now we're gonna go ahead and read about the candidates, the two major candidates for the Republicans and the Democrats. So in this article, we're gonna read about President Donald Trump. He's gonna write uh, re-running, running for a uh, re-running for re-election. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and read about him. Now, image one, President Donald Trump smiles while speaking to members of the media on the South Lawn of the White House in Washington, D.C. on May 24th, 2019, before boarding Marine One for a short trip to Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland and then to Tokyo. Okay, this is written by a New Zealand staff. President Donald Trump begins the 2020 election in the advantageous position of already being president. Sitting presidents are hard to beat. Only five sitting presidents lost re-election votes in the 20th century, with Bill Clinton's win over George H.W. Bush in 92 as the most recent. However, President Trump went through a bruising impeachment hearing, followed by criticisms of his handling of the coronavirus. Voters are now more divided than ever in opinion polls about the president. His supporters hope that the economic successes early in the first term and America first positions will outweigh any damage from the coronavirus. They hope his record as president so far brings out his base on election night to return him to the Oval Office for a second term. This is a quote, no dream is too big, no challenge is too great, nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. He said that in November 2016. First term. In President Trump's first 100 days in office, his administration targeted immigration and border rules. Trump uses powers as president to impose a travel ban on citizens from Iran, Libya, North Korea, Syria, and Yemen entering the U.S. In January 2017, Trump signed an executive action to start construction, constructing a wall along the Mexico border. He forced a near shutdown of the government and declared a state of emergency to move funds from other government departments to pay for the wall. Only a few miles of new barrier wall has been built so far. Most of the money has been used to repair the 650 mile fence and barrier built under George W. Bush's administration. President Trump fulfilled another campaign promise when he withdrew the U.S. troops from the pair, I'm sorry, when he withdrew the United States from the Paris Climate Accord in June 2017. The agreement addressed the effects of climate change and it was signed by nearly 200 countries. Trump claimed it would harm U.S. businesses. In December 2017, Trump signed into law new tax cuts. The cuts lowered corporate taxes, permanently and temporarily lowered taxes for many individuals. Trump argued that the cuts would spur economic growth and encourage businesses to hire more workers. Tax preparation company H&R Block said that its client it, that its clients' 2018 taxes went down by an average of $1,200 over 2017 because of the tax cuts. Critics argued that the tax cuts unfairly benefited the rich. However, it would only provide a short boost to the economy while increasing the government's debt. Trump's pledge to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, hasn't been successful. However, his legislative and legal challenges have weakened elements of the law. Recently, Trump scored a political victory in replacing the maligned North American Free Trade Agreement, also known as NAFTA, with the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, USMCA. The USMCA, however, is by many accounts just an updated NAFTA. It brings the agreement into the 21st century with protections for intellectual property, the environment, and data. The law does require more car and truck parts to be produced in North America, higher wages, and an easier path for unionization for, American, for Mexican workers. These provisions help secure the support of Democrats and unions. Now, key policy initiatives. President Trump promises more of the same in the second term. Tough action on undocumented migrants, expansion of the border wall, renewed attacks on Obamacare, and expansion of energy production in national parks and government land. Despite Trump's first term promise to deport millions of undocumented migrants, he trails previous president Barack Obama. During his time in office, Obama averaged 383,000 deportations a year and deported a record 409,849 individuals in 2012. Trump's highest year total by comparison was 267,258 in 2019. He blames this in part of sanctuary cities that will not cooperate with his deportation efforts. Trump has made an appeal to younger and moderate Republicans with a plan to plant one trillion trees to absorb carbon dioxide to combat climate change. He promises, we will always protect your Medicare and always protect your Social Security, always. Trump also promoted new spending on infrastructure, which is considered a safe bipartisan issue. Presidential bid. 
President Trump's re-election campaign began just weeks after his election. He filed his re-election campaign papers on the day of his inauguration. The president announced in 2018 that current Vice President Mike Pence would once again be his running partner. Fundraising for his re-election campaign also began soon after inauguration. Trump has roughly $113 million in cash on hand for his campaign compared to the $108 million in Joe Biden's campaign fund as of late July, according to Ballotpedia.org. Now, why Trump could win? Beyond the advantages of being a sitting president, Trump was benefiting from a strong economy up until the coronavirus hit. Unemployment dropped a to 3.5% in December 2019, a level not seen since December 1969, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Yet the stock market, as measured by the Dow Jones Industrial Average, is still up over 50% since Election Day 2016. It hit an all-time high of 29,398 on February 14th, 2020. Since COVID, unemployment has skyrocketed but if the economy improves and coronavirus cases drop before the election, Trump could benefit. Trump's pro-business policies still appeal to small business owners and voters who think Biden would pass costly social programs to make the liberal wing of his party happy. Given where Democrats and Republicans are geographically pocketed and around the nation, there is a possibility of a repeat scenario of 2016. Trump may lose the popular vote, but win the electoral college. Why Trump could lose? Despite a strong economy for most of Trump's first term, there is a continued sense that many were left out of the economy's growth. Income inequality has continued to increase. The rich are getting richer while the national minimum wage of $7.25 an hour hasn't moved in a decade. Though booming housing prices benefited some homeowners, younger Americans facing job losses, slow wage growth, heavy student debts, and a tough road to home ownership may see the American dream as slipping farther out of their reach. Additionally, Trump's tax cuts may not be enough to make working class Americans feel they can afford the cost of living in today's America. In 2018 midterm elections, a decent chunk of Republican voters, especially suburban women, voted instead for Democratic lawmakers. If a Democratic candidate can appeal to those swing voters in swing states, they may have success. Additionally, Democratic efforts to motivate the millions of people not registered to vote or who don't vote could push enough votes to deliver the White House to a Democrat. Only 56% of voting age Americans voted in 2016. Okay, class, the next article that we read will be about the next candidate, Joe Biden. Bye-bye.